Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over another interesting point and if you find this video useful, consider subscribing to my channel because I am going to be creating more follow-up videos on this topic and I also have a series of other cybersecurity and network security and, and IT best practices videos that may be interesting to you as well. So I'm going to be talking about autopsy, which is a an open source digital forensic tools that you can use to perform different tasks and collect different type of information from different sources. Now, uh, disclosure, I am not a forensics expert. However, due to my job responsibilities with different organizations, I do have to perform some type of uh, forensic analysis uh, to help the organization uh, collect information or evidence on specific things. Now, instead of doing the job manually, you can use a tool such as um, autopsy to collect and categorize that information for you in which you're gonna be able to create a project, save that project, edit, not edit, like going back to that project and collect information based on what you are looking for. Now, something to keep in mind, and this is what I wanna show you here, the uh, autopsy is part, of the is part of the sleuth kit, and this is the official GitHub uh, repo in here, as, as you could see. They have different tools that you can use. It's a very useful kit if you are into forensics or if that's something that you have to do every now and then or something that you want to get into. And the tool that we're going to be talking about is Autopsy. As you could see, it has its own um, site with information about it. So you can go visit the site and you can download the uh, software from there and it runs on Kali Lin it runs on not on not on Kali Linux it runs on Linux including Kali it runs on Mac and Windows which is very very um, uh, simple to use and you could run it anywhere I'm not gonna go through the installation because the installation is pretty straightforward just download it run it there's not much configuration you have to uh, do to get this up and running but once you have that running this is where you're going to have to start like thinking about what you want to accomplish what i have here is a um, spare drive a hard drive that i was using on a previous computer and i'm using this as uh, for my test environment and as you could see, and this is what I want to show you, once you connect to or open up Optopsy for the first time, one of the first questions you're going to see is it's going to prompt you for the option of adding a data source. And the data source in this case, as you can see here for me, is a physical drive that I have attached to this computer. Right? And this is my data source, the physical drive. And Windows is seen that as drive D. Something you have to keep in mind, and we're going to be talking about this uh, later. Let me just click here on add data source. When you click on adding a data source, you have to specify a name. Let me uh, just name it whatever. Uh, new data source. And then you click next. Next, and these are the options that you are gonna have to add the data source. As you could see, the first option is disk image or VM file. And if you select that, you have to point to the location where you have that disk image or VM file. Now, I was doing a test before and I see that I can point to my uh, Windows 10 virtual machine file that I have stored on this computer you have to find a way to access that file that's what I'm trying to say I would advise you when possible to access that file locally if you can but if you're mapping to a network drive make sure that the network connection is fast because it's gonna take a long time 
for autopsy to ingest that data into the system and to do all the uh, m and to apply all the modules to it. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the other options are if you have a local disk like I do. So it was pretty simple because I pulled the hard drive out of the other computer. I connected it to one of those um, adapters on this test computer and I'm using the local disk. You could have logical files as well. If you have those logical files, you could find that information right from here. Or you could even have uh, an image on an allocated space. So my experience has been that I've been doing this a lot on VM and local disk, but each um, case is different. And perhaps in the future, I'm gonna have to image something with a logical image or use a logical file for that. Once you have that information, uh, Autopsy is going to import that data into your system, as you can see here, and it's going to scan the data based on the modules that I have selected. And I don't want to do this now because it's going to take a very long time. Actually, let me do this. And I'm going to cancel that as I'm going there. So let me uh, come here, new data set I'm gonna click next I'm gonna do a uh, disk image or VM file and I'm gonna select my uh, Windows 10 uh, file I'm not gonna do any of the optional values but this is useful if you're performing a more serious investigation make sure that you apply and you specify the hash value if you have that information and then from here, these are the modules that you are going to select for autopsy to extract that information that falls within that category from your data source. So what you see here, in this case, you can always select all or deselect all and just select the ones that you need. This is what is going to be applied to the data source that you are going to be importing. And as you can imagine, if you select them all, it's going to take a longer time for the system to analyze that data and present that data to you. What I would advise you to do is to select a handful of them that you know for a fact that you want to look into. For instance, if you're looking for picture analyzers, right? If you're interested in pictures, photos, or if you're looking for um, what else do we have in here? Uh, rec recent activity, for instance, you could do that. And then once you go through this process, because as you could see, this is going to take a long time for that module to be applied to the data source. As you could see, it's importing everything. But if you implement or if you apply maybe a handful of them that you need, once you have the project created, you can go back to your data sources and uh, hold on a second and from here you can um, run the uh, ingest module again you can select those that you would like to run on that same data source to collect that information so that is for this. Oh, something that I forgot to mention before, and maybe that's something I should have done. The first time that you create this or that you open up Autopsy, that's going to ask you if you want to create a new project or if you want to open a new project or a recently opened project. Uh, if it is the first time that you're doing this, obviously make sure that you select that you want to create a new project, just assign a project name, and then you're going to be able to select the uh, data source that you would like to select. Now, once autopsy runs, it's going to categorize whatever information it finds into a predetermined set of categories. As you can see here, it found program files, you know, 50 um, items it found in, um, uh, for instance, no, this is what I'm talking about, like right here. This is what's interesting to me, right? So uh, it's going to categorize, for instance, the, uh, the files that it found into categories, images, videos, audio, archives, databases. 
and it's going to have another section for categories like whatever PDFs it found, whatever uh, plain text it found, whatever office documents it found, they're going to be categorized and they're going to show them to you right here. So as you can see uh, here, uh, all that information is going to be categorized and if you select that information here on this pane, you're going to see if it's something that's going to be dis displayable, right? If you click on, th on this, for instance, on this end user license agreement, you're going to see that information displayed here, which is pretty cool. So you don't, you can have a quick look at the file that is in front of you without having to go through the whole explorer and trying to find the right program to look, to look into the file. Uh, it's going to do the same thing for uh, videos, audio, images, and it's going to get all that information in front of you. Now, remember, the, w one of the uh, advantages of using tools such as Autopsy is that it's going to save you a lot of time. I remember back in the days when I didn't know about this tool, I used to go through Windows Explorer to find the information that I was looking for, and it was such a pain because sometimes we had hidden files, and you have to go into these hidden folders to find files, and it was a mess, right? And it was very time consuming. In this case, um, the application is gonna categorize everything in front of you for you to have it all from one centralized location. Uh, as you could see, the other categories is gonna go by file size, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna show you different um, file size categories over a gig, 200, blah, blah, blah. So you can narrow what you're looking for. And then in here, you're gonna see the, the remote drives, the, um, you're gonna be able to see the, uh, and whatever was encrypted is right here. You're gonna be able to extract a lot of metadata and as you could see, I mean, this is something that if you are into IT, it's just gonna make sense to you. I don't have to explain what web caches and web cookies are and web downloads, but here it is for you to look into. Another cool thing that I like about um, Autopsy that makes my life easier is that you can perform searches based also on uh, timeline. So as you could see here, inches still going on. And, you know, it may be that, and the inches that is happening here is for this VM that I just added, right? So if I expand this, as you could see, it's not gonna present much information because I didn't specify too many modules to be applied to this. But let me go back here to timeline. Yes, I'm gonna click continue. And this may or may not work. Okay, and as you could see here, based on the uh, time uh, stamp that is on these uh, files that I that have been accessed, it is going to present to you a time frame. As you could see here, by years, then you can narrow down by month, and then you can narrow down by weeks, and specify a specific time for the files that you are looking for, right? You could see it you know, as count or you could see it as detail. Something else that you have to keep in mind is that whatever system your user, you're, you're using to perform your analysis by using autopsy, it has to be a very reliable system with enough uh, memory and CPU power to perform all these calculations that are happening. As you can see here, this is taking a long time because number one, it is a, um, I'm gonna call it a large, even though it's not really large, just about like 500 gigs of information that I have attached through a USB 3 adapter. So that's kind of a slow. So those are the things that you have to keep in mind when you are implementing or conducting this type of investigation. So you have that in here. While well, this is thinking, let me show you one more option that I personally like here is that you can generate your own reports on the information, right? In this case, I'm gonna have an HTML report. As you could see, these are the other options. And what's cool about the reports is that 
you know, as you could see, let me select only the drive that I want to, or the uh, data source that I want to run the report on, right? And I'm gonna, uh, uh, all results, or you can choose the results types right here. You can select what you want to be displayed on that data source. I'm gonna select them all and I'm gonna click on finish. Now, this may take, I don't know how long it's gonna take. So it looks like it's moving ahead. And as you could see in the background, because I added a new data source, that data source still being added and being analyzed on the module, and the only module that I selected is being applied to it. So it may take some time. So let me pause the video for one second until this is done and then I'll come back. Okay, so I'm back as you could see here, the report has been completed. And if you open up the HTML report, the cool thing about this is that you can concentrate on the areas that you are looking for, right? Um, as you could see, if you just wanna see the, for instance, the operating system information, here it is. Or if you wanna see remote drives, you're gonna see this right here as well or if you're looking for web caches, bookmarks, so on and so forth. So you're gonna be able to access that information in an easier, less heavy way than running that from the application. But obviously the application is gonna present everything that you need live and you can click on something and go into deeper uh, investigation analysis by using the application rather than just using the report. Now, I'm gonna pause this video right here. If you found this information useful, click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and why not uh, consider leaving a nice comment? You know, that's always good karma. We all need to, um, to appreciate what other people do for us as well. So thank you for watching. Again, if you enjoyed this, subscribe to my channel, look at the other videos. Maybe you're gonna find something else that you like in there. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.